What's up guys, Josh from Everyday FBA here. Today we're going to do a reprice it tutorial. If you have a thousand items or so in inventory and still don't have a repricer, what are you waiting for? It's such an affordable way to gain a competitive advantage. And it's tiered really depending on how much inventory you have. So if you're like me and you have about 1600 items in inventory on an average, it's gonna cost you $16.95 a month. That is such a low cost compared to the benefits. All right, guys, stick with me. We're going to go over some of the things in price it that had me very confused when I first got into the software. Some of the things that I looked at and said, how the hell do you navigate this? What does this mean? We're going to go over some of those things so that when you're ready to get that repricing software going for you, you can hit the ground running. Stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get right into it. Let's go over some of the easy stuff first, and then we'll dig into this area here, which is where most of the confusion starts to happen. Uh, so for this side, what you really need to look at here is repricing schedules. This, you can set a schedule uh, for how often do you want to reprice. You can do it on the hour, every hour. You can do it on any given day. You can do it daily. Uh, so if you wanted to just you know pick every day, and we'll say every day at uh, 2 p.m., I want my repricing to go to work for me. So now you see it's going to reprice at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's going to reprice at noon. It's going to reprice at 2. And you can go through here and set as many of these as you like for whatever times you desire and reprice all damn day if, they, if you show wish. Uh, the other item really you need to look at is exclude items. Now this is going to allow you to add a specific SKU into reprice it that it's going to look at and say, no, don't touch it. You know, don't reprice it. Leave it alone. Skip it. And you can put the specific skew in here or you can go ahead and set a wild card now a wild card is these things right down here basically you're gonna put this in front of any uh, skew that contains that item and then you will hit you know this little button wild card so say we wanted to do grocery use this wild card add item now it's got this so any skew you have with grocery out in the front it's gonna skip it it's not gonna reprice it this is super duper important because I don't want reprice it touching some of my more high dollar items, you know, my video games, my shoes, uh, things I bought off eFlip. Uh, these are things that I invested more money in, therefore I want to have more control over the pricing of it. So I want it to skip those items and just concentrate on my books. All right, guys, let's dig into these templates a little bit. The first one it's going to have for you is called Global. I don't know why they named it that, but that's what they named it. Um, but let's go into the view edit template so we can deep dive into this. Now you can change the name if you like. It doesn't really matter to me. Some of this stuff is self-explanatory, like this template is for. I'm FBA, so I just hit FBA. And down here, you're going to tell it what do you want it to look at. So listing date range, uh, I put 30 days old to over three years old. Uh, now, the reason I set mine to 30 days because I set a, a educated price from the beginning. When I list an inventory lab, I set that price by looking at all factors and I set a price that I want. So I don't want reprice it to touch that item until 30 days has passed. If after 30 days I have not been able to sell that item at the price that I want, now I'll reprice it. So that's why I do 30 days. You can do whatever you like from day one to seven, you know, two weeks, two years, whatever you're comfortable with, you can set that. Same goes for sales rank. Uh, I don't want reprices to touch any of the lower, lower ranks because I feel like those items are going to sell so quickly that there's no need to reprice. And then price range, we're going to go from $12.99 to $500. Now, the reason I set my minimum at $12.99 is because I don't want reprice it to reprice anything that I have priced below $12.99. And yes, I have a couple of things repriced below. Say, for instance, uh, I have a book that's nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Now you can still make profit off a of nine dollar ninety nine cent book. It has to be a very lightweight book, but you can still do it. Uh, and I don't want that to be repriced because if it were to say knock it down to eight or knock it down to seven, you know, at what point am I going to start losing money on it? So um, when I set a price or I'm selling a book for nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine, whatever it is, if it's that low price point, I want to make sure that I get that price point. I don't want it repriced. And then you go through here and you can select, I select all conditions because I have all kinds of conditions. So, uh, 
All right, guys, let's get into it some more. You're going to click on the View, Edit, Repricing Settings. This is where things get a little bit more confusing. Uh, you're going to compare new to new. You're going to compare use to use, yes and yes. Uh, and then you can exclude some offers. So if someone just has an acceptable condition of whatever it is, you want to just, I don't even want to compare myself to acceptable because I'm better than that. You'll check this box. Uh, if you want to exclude the just launch seller, you'll check this box. If you want to exclude sellers with a rating below a certain percentage, you can check uh, one of these, whichever one you like. I, I do 80%, no particular reason why. I just figure if you're at 80%, you're not too much of a competition for me. I don't know. Uh, minimum allowable price. All right, this is where it gets super important to pay attention. Minimum allowable price. So there's stories of people saying, I used a repricer and it lost me so much money. And the reason is minimal allowable price. Guys, set this number, figure out what your number is and set it, put it here. Check this box because if you don't, you could lose money. Say, you know, someone jumps on the offer, selling a book, someone jumps on it and prices it at $6.99. And you see these, you see these guys doing that stuff. Uh, if you're repriced to compare to the lowest offer, you're going to beat that $7.99 price. And then what? You're going to lose money. And if you do that, to a thousand items, you're gonna lose a lot of money. So figure out what your minimal allowable price is, put it in this box. I use $12.99, because anything lower than $12.99, uh, I'm gonna probably lose money on, depending on what the book is. If it's a, it's a heavy ass textbook, and I sell it for $12.99, I'm gonna lose money on it. And if something really light, I'll probably still make some money. It just depends on the book. But minimum allowable price, $12.99, I do not want reprice it to go in and price anything in my inventory lower than $12.99. Anything lower than $12.99 is my decision to make. The same with a maximum allowable. You can set whatever number uh, you think you're comfortable with here. Check this box as well. Uh, now here, you're going to pick how many offers you want to compete against. This one's a little bit confusing, but basically what it's saying is this determines how aggressive or conservative you're going to reprice. So the more offers you consider, the more conservative uh, an item will be repriced. So the way I interpret that is the higher the number, the more conservative, the lower the number, the more aggressive. So I set mine at three because I do want to be aggressive you now with a lot of my inventory. Uh, and this is just some repricing settings. When do you want to reprice when there's new offers? Uh, and then do you want to reprice when something goes down a certain percentage? So 75%, if an item goes below 75%, I don't want to reprice it. I don't want to touch it because to me, that's that's like you're losing all the value of the book. 75%, if I set a price for $10 and now the book's worth $250, I don't want to reprice it to $250. Uh, so I would like to make those decisions on my own as well. Same thing goes for the uh, price going up. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because you definitely don't want to leave money on the table. And if you're the lowest offer at 12 and some other guy comes in at 50, there's room there to increase your price and make more money. Uh, so I do want to be able to get that upswing and that more profit. But at the same time, I don't want to compete with the crazies out there who are, you know, pricing things at $200 when it's a $12 book. So for that reason, I keep it at 50%. If the price goes up more than 50% of what I priced it for, uh, I don't want it to. I don't want it to move. And then you can pick a repricing models here. Uh, you can compare it to the lowest possible. You can be the same condition or better. You can compare it to the buy box, or you can do intelligent repricing. Intelligent repricing. I don't know what it is um, exactly. I don't think anyone does, but it's said to be where they put all their. Uh, knowledge and efforts and research into making it the most intelligent repricing strategy there is. And for me, this probably encompasses like these three things rolled into one. Uh, but I play around with these a little bit. I'll do intelligent. I'll do the buy box. Uh, I don't do this because like I said, condition is not really a factor for me. Um, but lowest possible price, buy box, intelligent pricing. I tend to play around with these a little bit. And then here you've got, you know, pricing above Amazon. No, you don't want to do that. You never sell it. And then you'll price 10% below whatever Amazon is. And here's where you pick, you know, how much do you want to reprice? So do you, if you have a certain, you know, dollar amount, if you just want, if you want to take a dollar off every single time or take a penny off every single time, uh, I just do a straight percentage, 1% or whatever it is, uh, I want to price below that offer. 
And then this is important as well. I only want to compare my FBA items to other FBA items. I do not want to compare my prime FBA offer to a merchant fulfilled offer because it's just not the same. Uh, so I compare it to FBA only. Uh, this is for merchant fulfilled. I just got it checked. It doesn't really mean anything to me because I don't do merchant fulfilled. And this is the big warning here. If you have this box checked and you have schedules running, it's going to start putting in the place, right? It's going to start kicking over stuff, sending the repricing to Amazon, and it's going to reprice your inventory. So if you don't want it to do it automatically, if you want to do that yourself, keep this unchecked. If you, you're, you're confident in what you do and the settings you have, click that. But I would say for anyone starting, uh, leave that box blank, run some reports, look at those reports, and that way you can get a feel for what is it going to do? What are these different settings that you've put in? How is that going to change your pricing? To give you guys an example of what I'm talking about, if you go to repricing reports, uh, my last item, uh, my last time my inventory was processed uh, and repriced is here. So if we look at items repriced, this is going to tell you what, exactly what was repriced. Items not processed, this is stuff that for whatever reason your criteria uh, didn't connect with it. So uh, that goes through your exclusions or your pricing or your sales rank, whatever. These items were not touched because you told it not to. Uh, and then your price item. So if we just look at it real quick, uh, you see that this one actually went up. Like the old price was $12.99, the new price is $18.76. That increased $5.77. That's awesome. This one went down $75. This one went down. This one went up. This one went down. This one went down. This one went down. So it goes. It goes up and it goes down. And it's awesome. Uh, but this way you'll be able to actually see what is going on. Uh, with the pricing you, you know is it like taking something from 12.99 down to 5.99 if so then you need to go back and look at um your criteria that you gave it so that it's not happening all right guys i'm sure there's a lot of questions i'm sure there's a lot of things that i did not answer there's a lot of things that i did not go over this video is already going to be way too long so put them in the comments guys hit me up at everyday fba uh if you want a question answered, if you have a comment, if you want a more detailed experience, let me know. Uh, I just wanted to try to keep this video as short as possible, even though it's already long. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys later.